Hey everyone, this is Lisa from TRW. In this video, I'm going to show you how to press onto this fun floppy hat. This is perfect for beach vacations, and especially if you're getting into the bridal industry, this is super big. So we are going to use the um, curving text option of Sew It Studio, so we curve the text just a little bit to follow this line, and then we'll go ahead and cut and press this. So perfect for the vacation, perfect for summer coming up, and let's go ahead and get started. So I am in Silhouette Studio. You'll see that I am running Business Edition. Uh, these features are available in Designer Edition and I do believe in uh, the Basic Edition as well. So you can do that in any version of the software. So here is my hat, my little floppy hat that I have going on. So this hat, the brim itself is about 20 inches in diameter and the inside part here is about seven inches so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of make myself up a template so I know how big to make my text and um, how to curve it so let's go ahead and I'm gonna go over to my circle tool over here on the left and I want to draw a perfect circle so the way that we draw a perfectly symmetrical shape in Silhouette Studio is we're going to hold down the shift button as we click and drag so I'm holding down shift clicking and dragging and I've made a circle. So I'm not really going to care about the size or dimension of it right now because I'm going to manually resize it. So I have my circle selected and then up here in my quick access toolbar, I'm gonna to go ahead and resize it. So I'm gonna go over and make sure I have this locked and then let's go over, change our width to uh, 20 inches, hit enter. And now you can see we have a very large circle now. So we have that all set. I'm gonna color this in a gray color so I can tell that this is my hat. So let's go ahead and draw another circle. Hold down shift, perfect circle. And I'm going to resize this to about seven inches to represent the middle of the hat. So you can see I was really close, 7.192. So let's go ahead and just type in seven. And then let's go right here, seven. Hit enter, and now I have this resized. And I'm going to color this black to contrast the top part. And now I'm going to take my mouse, drag it over to grab both circles. And this button right here that's a circle with a little T through it, that is to center each item on itself. Click that. And now I have this centered and this represents my hat basically. And I'm going to change this gray to a slightly different color because it kind of uh, confuses me because it's the same color as my background. So here's my hat. We have this all set. And now what I want to do is I want to create a line to wrap my text around. Now we can wrap our text on the outside brim of the hat. What I am going to do is I am going to create an offset or another line off of it so that um, we can kind of gauge how far from the edge of the hat we want our text to be. So I'm going to go ahead and show you because it might be a little confusing to understand right now. So here's my hat. Let's go over to our offset panel, go towards halfway down, maybe a little bit more on your right panel, a little star with a line around it. Let's click offset. And now my outside circle is selected. Click offset and now we can choose our distance. So check it out. I clicked offset, which means it's gonna go to the outside. So let's go ahead and cancel. And we want to do an internal offset. So we want to do a line off the inside of our shape. So let's select our circle again, do internal offset, you can see a line has shown up inside. Let's change the distance. So they have this by inches. So I want my text to be about an inch and a half from the outside, so we'll do 1.5, hit enter. So here's my preview. This is the line that my text is going to sit on. So just keep that in mind. That line does not represent the center of my text. It represents the bottom edge of it. So you wanna make it closer to the edge than you think you need because your text is gonna take up more space. So this is all set, let's hit apply. And so now I have my circles all set. Let's go ahead and type out our message. I'm gonna write, hello sunshine. These hats are perfect for brides, okay? So if you are working with brides, have it saying, you know, just married, honeymooning, Mrs. so-and-so is a great idea. Now for me, I've been married almost five years, so I'm not really a a just Mary type of girl anymore. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna make this a font called Octavia Script that I like to use. 
and let's go ahead and fill that in. I'm going to make this blue, and now let's go ahead and kind of stretch this out. All right, so here's my Hello Sunshine. I've stretched it out about this big. So I want to account for it to be about half the hat. You don't want it to be too big because you want someone to be able to read it from one angle. So now we are going to wrap our text. So right now we have our text here. You type it out, you can edit it, okay? That's what text edit mode is for. We can double click on it, we're in text edit mode, which means there's a green box. We can retype it, we can change the font, we can do a bunch of different things with it. One cool thing about text edit mode is that we can curve our text. So right now our text is dependent on something else to curve. So you can see we have this little uh, compass right here. I'm gonna drag this and you can see as soon as it touches a line, it kind of will wrap around it. So this is one part of text edit mode. The way that we have our text curve like this is because we have a line to tell it what to do. All right, so if I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna zoom in using my select zoom tool, you can see that it's contingent on this circle, this line. If I were to go in and delete this circle, oops, I grabbed the wrong one. If I were to go in and delete this circle right here, Oh my goodness. I'm gonna drag a line and then hold shift to delete that. See, I deleted that circle and now it's not curved anymore. So I'm gonna hit Control Z. It's contingent on that. So right now I'm gonna do a couple edits real quick. If you look closely, you can see where these letters overlap. And because it's curved, it kind of squishes my letters together. So I'm gonna go over to my text panel and increase my spacing just a little bit, okay? So my character spacing is at 100%, so that means it is at what is proportionate for that point size for that font. So what I'm telling the software to do is, hey, I want you to kind of stretch out the space between my letters just a little bit. So I'm gonna do just a tiny bit, maybe 102. Hit enter and you can see it looks a little bit better right here. And you can see it goes past this N and this S, but look, it doesn't touch this H here. So you kind of have to figure out what is best for you. So for me, I don't wanna to do too much connecting with this H, so I'm gonna go over and I'm going to kind of just check everything, readjust it. So I'm gonna double click to get the text edit mode a little bit more and kind of curve this back down so I can have a better view of it. Oops, be careful, because you can jump to the wrong side of your your circle. So we have our hello sunshine. And now we're pretty much all good with that. We're gonna do a little point editing after. So now that I'm happy with how my text is curved, where it is, I'm gonna select my text and now I'm gonna do, I'm going to weld it, okay? Um, basically what we have to do is we need to change our text from being text, we can retype and edit it to lines or an object or a shape, okay? So if you work with a text that does not overlap, you can go ahead and convert it to path or convert it to lines. Um, this, because I have overlapping lines, I need to join my lines together. I need to make sure that when I cut it, I don't have sections of my letters missing from those overlapping letters. So let's go right here. I have my text selected and then weld is in my top quick access toolbar. We're going to hit weld. So check it out. Now my overlapping lines are gone. Now one thing to keep in mind, if you look at this, we have uh, squares around each section. So any part of the design that was not actually touching are still separate objects. So we want to join this all together as one big object. So I'm going to right click and make compound path. Essentially, what I'm saying is, hey, I have a whole bunch of lines in here. Join them together to make one big object. So let's make compound path. So now you can see there's only one box around there. And then let's jump over to this little part of our design and do a little bit of point editing. So let's go ahead. I'm going to double click so you can see my points are showing up. And then I want to edit out this little like nubby thing. So let's select a point right here. Let's hit delete. And now it'll jump to the next point in sequence. So I'm just gonna hit delete until that's smooth and then get rid of this little guy. Now don't forget, this is going on a bumpy hat. So like if there are sections that are, you know, still a little bit rough, I'm not worried about it because it's, I mean, it's just gonna be on a bumpy hat anyway. So do keep that in mind. Now, if you wanna select multiple points at a time, you also have the option of holding down shift and drawing a box around them to delete a bunch. Um, I'm doing it this way just because I want you guys to see how easy it can be. So let's go ahead and I'm see how this goes in. I can delete this point right here and now I have a smoother transition into this H. 
so check that out. Now let's zoom out. I'm going to hold down the Alt button and scroll down with my mouse wheel. This will kind of zoom out for me too. And I'm going to click off of here to get out of point edit mode. All right, so we have the design ready for my hat. So now we have to basically just check out our design, see how we're gonna cut it, and find the best way to cut our design. So let's go ahead, get rid of this hat stuff. See you later. So my design is about 11 inches tall, 14 inches wide. So what I can do is I can kind of take it and let's set up my page settings to basically, I'm gonna cut on one foot of Glitter HTV. So that is 12 inches wide and 20 inches tall. I type that in and then let's turn off our cutting mat because I will not be using a cutting mat for that. So now you can see our design kind of sits right on here. So now we have one more step. We need to reverse this. So let's go ahead, right click, flip horizontally. So now this is all set up to be cut with our silhouette. Now when I cut this, what I'm gonna do is I'm not doing a weed box around this like I normally do. because so I'm gonna take my scissors and cut out this middle section here and cut out around there because I don't wanna waste a whole bunch of vinyl on this hat. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna send this to my cutter, cut it, and then we will be back to weed and press this design. All right, so now this is all cut and I have it on this floppy hat. So this is just a floppy hat that I picked up. I think I was at a trade show. You can find them on a lot of sites for blank stealers, Amazon, all that fun stuff. So I went ahead and placed my design on here. So what I did is I kind of just sat this down, eyeballed it to see if it looked good, and then in certain places I went here, here, and here, and measured up about an inch and a half to make sure that it's about even. So um, a couple different tricks that I do with that. And so because of how this curves, I won't be able to get the whole design on my press at one point. So what I'm doing is I'm figuring out where the top of this hat ends, and then I'll just be pressing those as I go. So let's go ahead and bring this down. My heat press is set to 315 degrees, and I am gonna bring my pressure up pretty high. My motto, when in doubt, increase your pressure. So let's go ahead. Oh man, that was high. Let's bring our high pressure and I'm just gonna do a few seconds at a time, just because I kinda wanna tack it down, and then I'll come back and kinda work my way through pressing it for real. All right, let's do a couple seconds here. Now the very top of the exclamation point is hanging off, so I will have to kinda curve this and do it again. And that's also part of the reason why I'm not doing full presses right now. This one's gonna be a full press because I'm gonna come back around. Um, because I don't want too much heat to get on it for a while. So this is gonna just go until the timer goes off at 15 seconds. All right, so my press went all the way to this U, so I'm gonna turn it and have the rest of this go on this press here. All right, so I was just readjusting it so the U kinda came off the press a little bit too. And we'll go ahead and do this. I'm gonna do about 12 seconds because this part did have a press to begin with. All right, so we have our pressing done. Let's slowly lift our carrier. I don't wanna run the risk of my vinyl not being adhered, but hey, it's like falling off for me. So now I have the cutest little summer hat. Hello, sunshine. So again, this is perfect for brides, you know, honeymoons, you know, just married, Mrs. So-and-so, do not disturb, any sort of vacation vibe. So this is awesome. And so I did this, this is the Caesar Glitter in Sapphire. So there we go guys, this is our HTV Cutie Patootie Hello Sunshine Floppy Hat using Caesar Glitter. This color right here was Sapphire, I love it, it's a great navy blue. So again, I used this Curving My Text in Silhouette Studio and just pressed it on with a heat press. So if you like this project, make sure that you comment below and give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube.